So let us start with Prüfer's proof. So first of all, uh, the cases n equals 1 and n equals 2 are trivial. So for n equals 1, the only tree you have is this tree. And for n equals 2, the only tree you have is this tree. And indeed, what about the number n to the power n minus 2? Well, 1 to the power 1 minus 2 is 1 over 1, which is 1 and 2 to the power 2 minus 2 is 2 to the power 0, which is also 1. So these cases are trivial, and for the rest of the proof, we can just assume that n is at least 3. So what? Uh, how are we going to do this? Well, let's call the set of all label trees on n vertices Tn. This is the set that we want to count and see how many such trees there are. And let's define a different set that has nothing to do with trees to begin with, namely the set of all sequences a1 to a n minus 2, so sequences uh, of length n minus 2 or with n minus 2 coordinates, where each a i is a number between 1 and n. So the set s n is quite easy to count. So pause and think how many elements s n contains. The answer is that since we can choose each ai in n ways and we have n minus 2 of them then we have the product of n minus 2 factors of n which is n to the power n minus 2. So the set Sn has the number of elements that we want to prove that Tn has. Why are we doing this? Well since we want to prove that Tn has this many elements, our strategy, or proofer's strategy, will be to show that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between Tn and Sn. So we will pair our set Tn with the set Sn. We will, to each tree, assign exactly one sequence. And since we have this exact correspondence between the two sets, if one of them has this many elements, then the other set will have the same number of elements. So to show a one-to-one -one correspondence, what do we need to do? We need to construct a function from the set of trees to the set of sequences that assigns one sequence to each tree, and a function in the other direction, assigning a tree to each sequence. And these functions shouldn't be completely random, they should be inverses to each other, meaning that if we start with a tree, apply the function f to get the sequence, and apply the function g to get a tree, we'll in fact get the same tree back. And conversely, if we start with a sequence, apply the function g to get a tree, and then the function f to get a sequence out of this tree, we will get our sequence back. So then we have showed that the two sets have inverse functions between them, meaning that the functions f and g are bijections between these two sets. They are bijective functions, meaning that the sets are in one-to-one -one correspondence. So then the function f will give us a unique uh, sequence for each tree, and no sequence will be the same for two different trees, and vice versa, g will give us a unique tree for each sequence, and no two sequences will have the same tree. If we manage to show the, all these three steps, then we have shown our one-to-one -one correspondence. So we have shown that the set Tn that we want to show has n to the power n minus two elements. We've shown that this set has the same number of elements as the set Sn, and we know that Sn has this number of elements, so we're done. So our job now is to construct these functions. We need to construct the function f and the function g. Let's start by constructing the function f. So we will see the general algorithm for doing it. Here it is, and we'll illustrate it with an example. So as our example, we will take the following tree. So we take a tree that looks like this. And it should be a labeled tree, so our labels will be 2, 3, 4, 1, uh, 5, and 6. 
So it's a tree on six vertices numbered from one to six. And we need to construct a sequence. So in our case, n is equal to six. So n minus two is equal to four. So we need to construct a sequence with four integers. So how will we do that? Well, uh, the algorithm says, set a1 to be the label of the vertex adjacent to the leaf with smallest label. So, whoa, wait a second, let's look at the leaves. Remember, a leaf is an end vertex, a vertex of degree one. These have labels two, three, five, and six. The smallest of them has label two, and the uh, vertex adjacent to the vertex with label 2 has label 4. So we set a1 equal to 4. Once we've done that, we remove our leaf and the edge connecting it to the rest of the tree. And then we repeat the process. So we look at the remaining vertices in the tree. And we look at the leaf of smallest label. So now among the leaves, the smallest label is three. And the uh, label of the vertex adjacent to the three vertex is again four. So A2 is again equal to four. Once we've done that, we remove the leaf and its edge. So uh, now we repeat the process. Now our leaves have uh, labels four, five, and six. Four is the smallest uh, of these numbers. The vertex adjacent to our leaf number four has number one. So our next A is equal to one. Again, we erase that leaf and its edge. Now we have two leaves, one of label five and one of label six. Label five is the smallest one. It's adjacent to the vertex of label one. So A4 is equal to one. And then we erase that vertex and the edge connecting it. And the algorithm said we should repeat until two vertices remain. So now two vertices remain and we stop. So our sequence is 4, 4, 1, 1. It's kind of a weird way to construct a sequence. And uh, the point is that, as we will see, it works. So this is the way to construct the so-called proofer sequence of a given tree. And the example illustrated that. The next thing we want to do is to go the other way around. So now we want to construct a function that, given a sequence, will produce for us a tree on uh, the vertices 1 to n. Our sequence, remember, has uh, n minus 2 numbers in it, and each number is between 1 and n. So again, we will see how the general algorithm, algorithm looks like, and we will take an example. So our example will be s equals 4, 4, 1, 1, which happens to be the sequence we got from our previous tree. So if we do everything right, and if proofer is right, then we should get back the same tree we started with last time. But now let's see how to construct a tree uh, on 6 vertices now. So since we have four numbers in the uh, sequence, this means that n minus 2 is equal to 4, so n is equal to 6. So we need to construct a tree on six vertices labeled from 1 to 6. How do we do this? First, we take the smallest positive integer that doesn't appear in our sequence and call it s. So the smallest positive integer in general is 1, but that one is already here. So the smallest positive integer that doesn't appear in the sequence is the number 2. So b1 is 2. And now we connect b1 and a1. So our a1 is 
uh, of course, the number four. It's the first number that appears in the sequence. So in our tree, I will draw it here. We will connect the vertex number two with the vertex number four. Okay. Now we continue. So once we have done this, we cross out B1. So the number two is henceforth cursed. We shall never use it again. Once we've done that, now we consider the smallest positive integer that is not crossed out and that doesn't appear in the remaining sequence. So the remaining sequence is this part, starting from A2 and on. So what integers do we have? We want to use one, but one is used here. Next case, two, but two is crossed out. Next thing is three. Yep, three is okay. So we set that equal to B2. And A2 is the second uh, number in the sequence. That's also four. And now we connect B2 and A2. So the four is already there and we connect it to three. And then we cross out B2. Then we repeat. So B3 shall be the smallest integer that is not crossed out and doesn't appear in the sequence starting from A3 and onwards. So we can't use the number one because it appears in this sequence. We can't use the number two because it's been crossed out. We can't use the number three because it's been crossed out. The number four hasn't been crossed out and doesn't appear here. So we set B3 equals to four. Now you might protest that the number four indeed appears in the previous part of the sequence and we've used it as A's, but that's not forbidden. What we need to check is that our number B i doesn't appear in a i onwards, so b3 shouldn't appear in uh, a3 onwards, and it shouldn't have been crossed out, and it's only the b's that we've been crossed out, crossing out. So we let b3 equals 4. And a3 is the third number in the sequence, which is 1. So we connect 4 and 1. So now it is the, the a1 that comes and u. So this is 1. And once we have done that, we cross out the B and we repeat. We let B4 be the smallest integer that doesn't appear in the remainder of the sequence and hasn't been crossed out. So now one appears, two has been crossed out, three has been crossed out, four has been crossed out, so B4 is five. And our A4 is the number one. So we connect one and five. Now, uh, we repeat until we have done b n minus two. So n minus two is four, so now we stop. We're almost done. When this happens, there are two numbers since we want numbers from 1 to n, but the b's only go from 1 to n minus 2, then there are, and they are different each time. There are exactly two numbers between 1 and n that we haven't picked in our b list. So which ones are that? Well, as you can see, the number 1 is missing and the number 6 are missing. So here we have 1 and 6, so we connect the two. 1 is already in the tree, 6 we have to add. And we're done. And if you look back at the tree from a minute ago, this was exactly the tree we had. So this is the way to construct a tree from the sequence using the proofer method. One thing that I have to justify, and this is this star thing. So the last step is the only step when things can go wrong. This is why I put a star here because it requires some explanation. So until the last step, it's, I mean, so far so good. We're using unique numbers and connecting them and so on. In the last step, 
these two numbers that are not obtained as bi, what if neither of them was already in the tree? Then we would be in deep trouble because then we would have a separate component. But this can't happen because when reaching that point, we already have n minus one uh, vertices on the tree. So at least one of these uh, two numbers that are uh, not in the B list will have been in the A list. And in this case, the number one. So it's already there. But what if both were already in the tree we have drawn? Then we would draw an extra edge between vertices that already have edges between them and create a cycle so we won't get a tree. But by a similar argument, arguing on the number of uh, times the, the numbers can have appeared, uh, again, not both can have appeared because we have five vertices and uh, um, it cannot be the case that both have appeared in the B list because we have too few Bs. So by these counting arguments that I just sketched uh, briefly, we know that nothing can go wrong. And if you really want to be picky, you can check that at each step, nothing goes wrong. So in summary, this creates for us a tree. So now we have a way to create a sequence from a tree and a way to create a tree from a sequence. And in this example, we saw that these are in the example, each other's inverses. So we started with a tree, we applied the function f, we got a sequence. And if we apply the function g to that sequence, we get our starting tree back and vice versa. So uh, it seems from the example that they are inverse to each other. Of course, this is not a proof, but this can be proved in general. We will not go into the details. Uh, it's basically just generalizing the ideas from this example. So accepting that, we now have a way to associate trees to sequences in a one-to-one -one correspondence, and the proof is done. And the sequence that corresponds to a tree T is called the proofer sequence of T. So it's a good thing if you learn how to construct the proofer sequence of a tree and vice versa, constructing a tree from the proofer sequence. Not only because this is a good thing to know for yourself, but this is an excellent way to feed the information of a tree into a computer. So uh, it's, I mean, computers can't handle drawings very well, but they can handle sequences of numbers better than anything. So now you have encoded a tree in a very efficient way. You know it's efficient because it's one-to-one, -one, so you have no superfluous information. Exactly the information contained in the tree is contained in this sequence, which is why it is a very ingenious way of creating the sequence. So one philosophical remark, what did we actually do here? Uh, we wanted to say that the number of trees is this. So instead of just uh, counting numbers, we constructed a set with the number of trees, namely the set of trees. And we constructed another set whose uh, number of elements was this n to the power n minus two that we wanted to prove. And in proving the, that these numbers are equal was achieved by showing that sets having these numbers of element are, these numbers of elements are in a one-to-one -one correspondence with each other. And this is a deep idea in algebra where if you want to prove that two numbers are equal, you add structure, you construct sets that uh, are in bijection, then you know that these numbers are equal. The gain from this is that not only are you comparing numbers, but you get more insight. You get a structure, you get a constructive, in this case, algorithm, or otherwise some more understanding of the objects you are studying. And in fact, there is a whole research uh, topic in algebra and geometry called categorification, of which this is an example. And this categorification uses this added structure to prove theorems in mathematics that have been difficult to prove if you just look at numbers. So this is definitely a hot topic in mathematics.